I'm Dr. Melanie Joy. I'm a social psychologist. I'm author of the book Why We Love Dogs, Eat Pigs, and Wear Cows, and also of the book Strategic Action for Animals. I'm also an international speaker and a trainer, and I'm the founder and president of the organization Beyond Carnism. Today I talked about carnism, which is the invisible belief system that conditions people to eat certain animals. Uh, carnism has been the focus of my research and of my life's work. We tend to assume that only vegans and vegetarians follow a belief system when it comes to eating animals. But when eating animals is not a necessity, which is true for many people in the world today, then it is a choice, and choices always stem from beliefs. Carnism is essentially the opposite of veganism. Carnism runs counter to core human values, values such as compassion and justice. Um, Meat cannot be produced without killing, and egg and dairy production cause extensive harm to animals. And most people care about animals and don't want them to suffer. So most people would not willingly support the industry of animal agriculture. What carnism does is it distorts our perceptions and numbs our feelings so that we act against our values without realizing what we are doing. Carnism uses a set of defense mechanisms that do this. An example of a carnistic defense mechanism is justification. The way that we learn to justify eating animals is by learning to believe that the myths of meat, eggs, and dairy are the facts of meat, eggs, and dairy. These myths are expressed through what I refer to as the three ends of justification. Eating animals is normal, natural, and necessary. And of course, these same arguments have been used to justify slavery and male dominance and other violent systems or oppressive systems. The goal of my work is, and my organization's work is, is to raise awareness of carnism so that people can make their food choices freely. Because without awareness, there is no free choice. When we are born into a dominant system, such as carnism, it's, it's, carnism is invisible, it is institutionalized, we inevitably learn to look at the world through the lens of carnism. And carnism shapes our preferences and our thoughts and our feelings when it comes to eating animals. When we learn about carnism and the way that it impacts our psyches, our psychology, and our society, we can reconnect with our authentic experience. So we can make choices that reflect what we authentically think and feel rather than what we have been taught to think and feel. For vegans, it's important to be informed, to have as much information as possible so that when they talk about veganism, they don't get frustrated and feel like they wished they had answers. Vegans usually get similar questions over and over again, like where do you get your protein, or what would happen to all the animals if people stopped eating them. And so it's important that vegans become informed about these basic questions so that they feel empowered to be able to answer them. It's also important for vegans to not feel responsible for having all the information. No one person can have all of the solutions to the problem that is carnism. The goal of vegan advocacy is really, as my friend Colleen Patrick Goudreau, another author says, is to plant seeds. For vegans, we can't force people to change, but what we can do is we can share the truth of our own experience. Usually it's best to do this through our own story. This is why I became vegan, and this is how I feel as a vegan. Share the information openly, and then leave it at that. If we feel vegans who feel responsible to have all the information and to make everybody change, get frustrated and exhausted and burned out, so Colleen Patrick Goudreau says, plant seeds. The goal should be to plant seeds, share some truth, and give people the opportunity to find out more information or to ask more if they want to. If you are talking to somebody about animal agriculture who's not a vegan, or anybody, even if they are a vegan, but let's assume you're talking to a meat eater, for example, and you want to show them graphic imagery of animal suffering, it's respectful and important to ask their permission first, not to shock them. Because if a person becomes shocked by this, they can be traumatized and they can get angry because 
they were not, uh, they might not have been willing to see this information. So I recommend saying, I'd like to share information with you about animal agriculture. This information I want to share with you, it can be difficult to watch, it can be graphic. Tell them why you think it's important for them to watch this and ask their permission and let them know it's okay to say no. People can get more information about our work, um, about raising awareness of carnism at carnism.org. My organization is called Beyond Carnism and our goal is to expose and transform carnism and we have a lot of resources for meat eaters as well as for vegans and vegetarians. And my book is called Why We Love Dogs, Eat Pigs and Wear Cows. It's also available in Italian. And thank you um, at Veggie Channel for doing the work you do to raise awareness of veganism and I've been to Italy several times both of my books are out in Italian and I always love coming to Italy it's one of my favorite places to visit and I'm always so inspired by the activists there and excited to see the growth of the vegan movement in Italy